Hello everybody, Happy New Year. Congratulations um, for making it through 2021, which I think we can all agree was a bit of a shit show, wasn't it? <laughs> it wasn't the best year in the world. However, on a personal note, a very good year for me and my family. Obviously I now have a bigger family. I've got Margot, we moved into this wonderful house and we started renovating and all that stuff. So on a personal note, a good year, but I think on a global note, not quite so good. Anyway, we just got back yesterday from um, the Tarletons, from Sarah's parents, where we stayed for about nearly two whole weeks actually for Christmas. Um, today is now New Year's Eve. Uh, I'm planning on posting this video tomorrow, which is New Year's Day, obviously. So I imagine many of you will be watching this um, whilst slightly hungover. So I hope you had a wonderful evening and hopefully 2022 will be the best year yet. Um, didn't get to see my family over Christmas. We all ended up getting COVID sort of individually. Firstly, Sarah and both, both Sarah and Margot got it. And although Margot bounced back really, really quickly, it was not a fun experience having a, a baby who, who was very poorly. She was only poorly for like a day and a half, um, but it was a bit scary, if I'm being totally honest with you. Poor old Sarah had it for a bit longer, but it was never that bad. And then I didn't show any symptoms for about two weeks on, well, maybe not quite two weeks, probably like 10, 11 days later, that's when I started getting ill. So obviously we had it and then my brother got it. Um, and so we've not been able to see my family. So I think we'll do Christmas with my bunch sometime in January when everyone's sort of clear and free. Anyway, we've just got home from Christmas with the in-laws. And as you can see, let me show you the living room is just a tip. We got here late last night and we've just like emptied the car. So there's all the gifts that we were given. There's like the baby stuff, you know, all that. So actually what we're gonna do today is just de-Christmas the house. We're either gonna take the tree down because actually the tree looks really nice, but if you come on closer inspection, it's a bit sorry for itself now. It's very droopy. It's dropping lots of pine needles. And I just feel like I'm going to say spring clean. I know it's not spring. Uh, I know it's not spring right now, but I just feel I've got in last night, and we were got home quite late, so we went to bed. But I woke up this morning, and the house is just a real mess, and I feel really, you know, like Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. Um, all the songs say so, but when you get home <laughs> after like two weeks with um, with your family and everything, it's really nice just to be in your own space again. However, my own space is an absolute pigsty right now, so I'm very much looking forward to sort of just decluttering. What I'm gonna do though is once I've taken the tree down, um, I'll go through my gifts, Sarah might go through her gifts, we'll go through Margot's gifts and sort of show you what we got, shall we? Because that'll be fun. It's also my birthday between Christmas and New Year on the 28th, so um, I'll show you some birthday stuff too. Here we have the uh, Christmas decoration box. I'm really dreading, oh God, I've just walked into it. I'm really dreading this bit because lots of our, some of our decorations are glass, some are plastic, what are you? They're pretty much all glass. They're pretty much all glass, okay. Um, and because the tree's really droopy now, there's, there's the, the, um, the wire, the, the fairy lights and everything, it's all very tangled. This tree as well, it's heavy. We, uh, we live not too, not too far from the park, probably about three streets away from the park and the Christmas tree, they had like a, um, a Christmas tree, um, what do you call it? Not a shop, a stand? A, what would you call it, Sarah? A Christmas tree what? Stall? Christmas tree stall, do you think? Anyway, they had the one in the park, but it's the other end of the park. And I was like, oh, I'll carry it home, be totally fine. <laughs> that tree's eight foot. Um, so I imagine it's not quite so heavy now because it's dry as a bone. Um, at the time, it was so heavy to get home and I decided to carry it all the way. Got back here, I was covered in dirt and I was sweating. Um, however, living in London, one of the benefits, well, particularly in, in where we live in London, is the council will just come and collect it for you and they will dispose of it responsibly. So um, all we have to do is de-Christmas it and then stick it outside the house and they'll just come and take it away, which is really handy. But it is gonna make a lot of mess. All the pine needles are gonna be on the floor. I'm gonna try not to break or smash any baubles. I Last... saw someone, I don't know who it was, I saw someone on Instagram the other day, it like, must have been yesterday, taking their tree down and they had a like, they literally had like a, a saw and we're just hacking at the tree. And I was like looking at the car a bit like, or oh. I have considered that actually, because we've just got our new windows as well. If you watched my last video, you'll know these windows are new and I can already see tree sap all over the glass, which is really, really upsetting me. But I'm considering rather than dragging the tree through the house, right through here, 
out here, through here, and out the front door, and then, you know, this is gonna make a load of mess. I'm wondering if I should just hack the tree to pieces in situ and either chuck it out the window or take the bits through the through the um through the house. Because then at least the mess is sort of localized to where the tree sits, but I don't know if there'll, be, if there'll be more mess, more pine needles and more sawdust if I start hacking at it. So I guess we'll just, we'll work it out, it's fine. Just to give you an indication of how long we've been doing this for, that time lapse uh, that you just saw was supposed to be running for the whole time that we were doing the tree. We're still very hard at it and uh, my camera ran out of battery <laughs> and it had a full battery. That's how long we're doing it. And look how far we've got. We've got one um, tangle here, but it still is very much entrenched in the rest of the tree. And then the other one, we've just got that end. We haven't found the other end yet. I take full responsibility for this. Yeah, absolutely you do. I'm not taking any, you did it. I don't think I should be in charge of the Christmas tree next year. No. Margot's woken up, so Sarah's gone upstairs to um, soothe the baby. My plan is, I think, to cut the tree in half with my saw here because it's really dry so it'll be very easy to cut i'm sure of that um and i'll cut i'll pull the first half through the window because that will fit and then the second half which is the bigger heavier sort of base i'll take that through the house because i don't think it'll squeeze through the window as easily i might make a mess yay for christmas totally worth it <laughs> Okay, here we go. Out the window, you. Ah. That'll do. That's life now. We just live with a bit of a, a tree stump in the house. The rest is too hard. Look, there's no tree. I actually quite like that space a bit more open. We used to have the chair that Sarah's sitting on, hello, um, in that corner, but I quite like that chair there. Actually, that's usually where, where I sit of an evening. I'll sit on the armchair there and Sarah will sort of lay on the sofa, often with Margot, you know, as they sort of breastfeed or whatever. Um, but I actually think it's quite nice to have that a bit more open. So what I might do is put that plant, this big guy, what's that called? Is that a cheese plant? I think that's a cheese plant. I'm going to put yeah. that. Well, I might just experiment and put that down there and maybe a few other plants and sort of see how it looks. The table needs to go back because the table does not live there. And in fact, we, we've got the peloton here and it won't live there forever. In fact, we've only got it until January because it was lent to us anyway. However, I really, really, really like it. Uh, I used it a lot because Sarah's parents have one. I used it a lot over Christmas and it was great. So I'm wondering if when we get the kitchen extension done later um, in the year, I might get one um, because it's really great, but it won't live there. Um, anyway, we need to clear this space. So the living room table is gonna go in this sort of big area here. In fact, why am I telling you? I can just show you. Shut up, Jim. I don't know, what do I think about this little area? Obviously, these ones are on the floor right now, but imagine if they were on like a table, not that's too small, but like that sort of vibe, but the right size um, by, the, uh, by the radiator there. I'm aware that you shouldn't really put plants next to radiators, but they're kind of pulled away enough that there shouldn't really be too much heat on them, especially if I then get a table to sort of elevate them a little bit. Not quite as big, as the armchair because the thing is once the armchair and the um, table are both in this area it can feel a little cramped and I love the plants I will have to ask Sarah about this because I've done it without her permission and she's not really big a fan of my plants <laughs> but I think it looks quite airy and a bit more open so I'll I'll see what she says right so that's a definite no <laughs> didn't even get to ask her she walked in carrying um, a, a box of recycling <laughs> stopped on the spot, looked at them, and did this look that Sarah has this look when uh, <laughs> she's either annoyed or something hasn't quite gone her way, and she just all goes, and she did that and looked at them, I was like, okay. <laughs> so they're not going there then. Do you know what? This has accidentally worked out really, really well, unintentionally. So obviously my armchair isn't going there. I wasn't allowed to keep the plants. I left them there for an extra 10 minutes, and um, it was very clear. <laughs> that it was never going to be allowed. So what I actually did is put uh, Margot's armchair there. This is called the Nuna, and it's really good because it rocks kind of just by inertia like that, and she likes the mobile on top. Um, but with my armchair 
here. I say mine, it's not actually mine, it's, it's ours, but I tend to sit on it more. Um, we've still got this space here, which we often use for Margot time here. So we've got her mat here. And currently what we're trying to do is teach her to roll over. She's a little slow with that. Most kids by now have learned to roll over. She's now just about four months. She's like a few days shy of four months. Um, and typically by now, a lot of kids are rolling. We're not worried about it. Like some kids just progress at different times. It's, it's no stress. But we're trying to encourage her to do it a little more. So we've got the mat out and we've got this, um, there's actually one of Sarah's pregnancy pillows here. Um, we're just sort of propping it up so she's laying on her side. And according to a very reliable source, that'll encourage her to sort of start rolling. But actually it's really good because with that armchair there, it gives us um, a place to sit while we're sort of maneuvering her and playing with her and keeping her entertained. This little rat has been an absolute hobgoblin all day long. <laughs> She's been just miserable constantly. But then she woke up from her nap and has finally given us smiles and it's the best thing in the world now. You a bit smiley now. No? Smiles have stopped, have they? You're quite fat. Is she looking at the screen? That's cute. Yeah, she's looking at the screen. <sighs> All right, Christmas gifts. So I'm gonna start with Margot, because actually she didn't get a great deal. We were very conscious of not just filling um, the house up with a bunch of stuff, but also she's so small. She doesn't even understand the whole thing anyway. And also we wanted to make her first Christmas really special, but I don't think gifts are necessarily the thing that make it special. Plus, she has so much stuff. Just by virtue of what I do for a job, that stuff comes through the door all the time for us. Um, and I don't want to just kind of keep having stuff that we're never going to get around to using. So I actually asked my family and friends who wanted to buy for her. Um, both Sarah and I just said, please donate to a charity. Sarah, what charity did we do? Uh, we did, wait, I'll run it. Ooh, 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 ooh. We did three charities from us personally. So, oh, I'm kind of in the corner. So, oh, Margot Chapman, for Christmas you gave... £500 to other children that needed. So we gave to a charity in Cheltenham, which is where I grew up right. and it's where we spent Christmas. Uh, we gave to a charity around here, which looks after children in care. And we gave to a charity that looks after children that suffer from domestic violence because of your background. Yeah. So as you can see, I didn't actually take charge of it, but Sarah and I discussed it before <laughs> and we really didn't want to have a Christmas of excess. We actually only bought her one thing, um, which was a, uh, it's like an adaptable wooden um, bouncer. Like a, it's a, oh, yeah, it's a yeah, play thing. So it's a bouncer that becomes a play thing that becomes all sorts of things as she gets older. Um, because like I said, we want to try to be better to the world and not make those a waste. However, she did get some stuff. Obviously she needed some things to open. One present that I really enjoyed that I can't find is, is in a box somewhere was a, a, a broccoli teether. She's starting to teeth. She's very, very dribbly. Um, and uh, Jackie, Sarah's mum, is obsessed with feeding people vegetables, fruit and vegetables. She's a chef, um, as she should be. You know, fruit and veg are really good. Oh, here it is. Um, <laughs> she can't even get her mouth around it, but it's just a little thing to chew on. It's a little teether. Wanna have a go? No, you're too small right now, aren't you? But it was just kind of cute and funny. Um, she also got this pair of slippers here, which is super cute. And then um, a bunch of books, um, which is really, really lovely because books obviously will last forever and they can be passed on. In fact, these ones here came from my brother and his wife because these are two books that their daughter, my niece, really, really enjoy. So things like that I think are, are meaningful. I'm conscious of how privileged we are um, in doing what I do and everything. And I just didn't want to have a spoiled child for her first ever Christmas. She doesn't even understand anyway. So, I mean, who knows? As she gets older, we these made- These are lovely. These were actually um, more of a Christmas, not really a Christmas present, but these are from my, I'm not even on the camera here, my best friend. And she's got like a personalized message because that was Catherine's favorite book to read before Christmas. Oh, so she bought it for, Marco, you're very lucky, aren't you? You're so um, nice, but I, I, I feel like we did the right thing this year by not just going to excess for her. I mean, again, who knows? As a parent, you want to spoil them rotten, so maybe next year if she gets older, we might do more. Um, but I, I hope we kind of keep this tradition where it's things that um, she wants and she likes and she needs and all that stuff, but it's not just excessive, you know? Anyway, on to me, because that's what's really exciting. Um, 
firstly, bear, bear in mind it was my Christmas, uh, it was Christmas and my birthday, so I've got a few bits to show you. This is an excellent gift for me. I love Sriracha. Um, in fact, it drives Sarah eventful because we go through it so quickly and she doesn't really like it and I have it on everything. Jackie, Sarah's mum, got me um, 12 days of Sriracha. Um, so I've only opened the first one, which is their kind of regular flavour Sriracha. But apparently, as you open them, in fact, I open day two, as you open them, you get different um, flavours. So this one is mayonnaise. I don't know what that one is. It's like, yeah, it's like, oh yeah, Sriracha Mayo, that one is, which is really cool. Um, so I'm going to open them all, but again, I might wait till we do the new kitchen because otherwise I'm going to have to store them somewhere. But that is an excellent gift for me. Um, also, Gary, Jackie's dad, bought uh, me a bottle of, sorry, oh, Sarah's dad, sorry, not Jackie's dad, uh, bought me a bottle of uh, Laurent Perrier, um, which I can't open, with some glasses, which is very kind. Like, I have everything, so I'm very tricky to buy for. Things like this are lovely, because it's a nice bottle, I can share it with someone, a couple of glasses in there too. You know, it's more about a moment rather than a thing, do you know what I mean? Margot may have got me a little daddy mug um, for my birthday, which is very, very sweet of her. You bought me that! Did you choose it? Yourself? Um, it's also the perfect size. I love a flat white, and a flat white goes in here perfectly, so I'm very happy with that. Speaking of coffee, yes, here we go. I also have a new, um, what do you call this thing? This is called the porter filter. That's what it's called. Is that called the porter filter? Yeah, this is called the porter filter. Uh, we have a really lovely coffee machine, um, but the porter filter that comes with it, it's just a bit like vanilla. Um, so I've got a new one here, which is like bottomless. So you can see the coffee just sort of come out rather than sort of through the, the two spouts. And it also looks like it holds a little bit more, <laughs> which is good for me. This I'm a big fan of. Uh, again, this came from Jackie. Jackie's a really good gift giver. This is a candle, right? Um, it's gonna look great in my office, but when you light the candle, can I show you? I don't know if I can or not. Here it is. So the candle itself is a dragon. Um, but when you light it um, and the, the wax melts away, inside is a skeleton, so you've got like a little keepsake. They've also give, got me the, uh, a plate that it sits on from the same company, so it's going to sit on there, and then as it melts away, a skeleton will be revealed, and then I'll just leave it, because I think actually the wax that melts and then solidifies on the bottom will kind of keep the skeleton standing up, and I just think that's a really fun, quirky thing for my office, so I can't wait to light that. That's not scented. I think you can get scented one. This one is just wax scent. Oh, these are a good gift from Sarah. Um, Ugg slippers. We got you some of these, didn't we? Um, I bought them. They actually. I bought them for myself. Oh, I'm gonna come in behind you. I bought them for myself, and um, Jim's sister Nick is obsessed with them. Um, I have been very jealous of them, and I nearly bought them, but I didn't want to spend the money actually because they were. Not cheap. They're like ninety quid or something, which is expensive. Every time Nick and I always message about our slippers. And um, the other day I saw someone in town, like literally on Oxford Street, wearing those out and about, and about as normal slippers. I mean... And I like took my phone out, like I really wanted to like sneakily take a picture to send to Nick to be like, we can wear them out of the house, it's, it's done, but the person walked away. They are very, very comfy. Um, what else? Oh, Sarah also got me these two photos, which are super cute. I think it might be a bit weird to give someone a photo of yourself for Christmas. So Sarah, <laughs> it's a photo of Sarah, but obviously with Margot. That's, I thought that was a nice it picture is a really, of her. It is really nice. I, I'm just saying that to give someone a picture of yourself is a little strange, but to give someone a picture of yourself and your baby is lovely. Um, and it's actually one of my favourite photos of the two of them. And then this one is um, my background on my phone because I just love it so much. And in fact, I don't know where my phone is, but it's like, you know how you can animate your, um, your background on your phone just by holding your thumb on it? Uh, I do that all the time because it's a little... Um, sort of tiny little few second video clip of Margot just as she smiles and it's super cute. Uh, also got here a storm glass. I did not know what this was when I opened it and I did that thing, you know where someone gives you a gift and you open it and you're not sure what it is. He's been ages just going, what is it? And having like a fake smile until you realise what it is. But the fake smile turned into a real one because this is super cool. It's like a teardrop shaped thing full of liquid, right? But it reacts 
to the, I guess, the humidity and the pressure and the warmth in, um, in your room or whatever. So it's going to go in my office and it will tell you uh, the temperature just based on how what's going on inside. It's so at the moment you can see there's sort of like um, crystals at the bottom, but the whole thing will go cloudy or it'll go clear or there'll be sort of mist floating around in it just based on what's happening with the weather. That's super cool, I think. This is a very lovely gift from Sarah for my birthday. This is a beautiful bottle of whiskey. I have no idea what it tastes like. I haven't yet, haven't tried it yet, but it is stunning. Can you see that? Is it on camera? Does it look good? Um, the bottle is beautiful. It's by Signet. I've never tried it, but I've read the text um, here and it sounds right up my street and I might. It's New Year's Eve, so maybe I'll crack it open tonight. Um, I will often, maybe one or two nights a week, we'll just have, um, you know, a, a small jar of whiskey while we sit and watch a show and just sort of chill out after a long day. Um, and yeah, I'm, I, I'm kind of becoming a bit of, um, not a connoisseur, and not a snob, but I know what I likes, basically. Um, will that do? There's one more you thing here. you got some whiskey glasses oh. for you. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, I did. I got my whiskey glasses here from um, Tom Dixon. Which are I was very beautiful. Also, like, uh, apologies for smashing one of your glasses. Oh yeah, I have whiskey glasses that Sarah smashed recently, uh, but that's really beautiful. Um, Sarah also bought me this hat that I'm wearing, which is lovely and cashmere. Um, I really need a haircut, which is why I'm wearing it for the video, because um, obviously having COVID, I couldn't go into the hairdressers, and it's been Christmas and everything, so my hair is an absolute mess. So I'm wearing the hat. Plus, I like it. Um, and that's everything. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Happy New Year. Um, I hope 2022 is off to the best start for you, even if you are currently hungover watching this. Um, and yeah, let's hope that for a good year for the world, as well as for each and every one of you individually.